All right, well, hello, Christy. Thank you for joining. Thanks for having me. Um, so, I mean, I just want to say, uh, Christy and I are really close uh, to one another. So anybody who's listening to this, I want them to know that we're really close. We've known each other since uh, like middle school, which for us is like 20 plus years. And um, yeah, Christy, you're a good friend. And I'm happy to talk with you about whatever you want to chat about or share. Yeah. Yeah, uh, it's been a long time, man. <laughs> so, but uh, yeah, let, having um, having this dialogue and uh, being able to share it with others too is gonna be it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be interesting. Let's um, try. We we always have hurdles that you we've always been been there for each other and just trying to grow and you know do the best we can, be the best version of ourselves. So, yeah, you you had a. Um... Well, um, like, is, is there something specific um, you wanted to mention? Like, there's a lot of things that I think are really cool that you bring up all the time, especially, you know, with your experiences with, like, your thyroid and, you know, looking back, things you learned from that. I think a, a ton of people can learn from that. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, go for it, man. Because <laughs> um, uh, you can call me out on it more than I can rant about it. <laughs> um yeah. I would say, yeah, I'm definitely not too happy with uh, wh where I am, but there's a reason for it, I'm sure. You know, good. there was a lot of good learning. What um, happens, like, what happened with your with your thyroid in general? I ended up uh, being diagnosed with what's called Hashimoto's. Uh, it's, and it's where m my body attacked its own thyroid. Uh, my thyroid calcified, turns cancerous, uh, s stage three spread into the lymph nodes and like they the had spread into the lymph nodes yeah the cancer spread into the lymph nodes yep yeah. and they removed 30 of my lymph nodes on the left side of my neck and my thyroid um knowing what i know now that um there was a lot of uh things they didn't tell me that would be a challenge i knew i was gonna have to take medication uh to replace the thyroid hormone but there's also things like the parathyroid that that might not even work if when they reimplant it into your shoulders, uh, and that's what um, processes your calcium. I was calcium deficient for two years uh, mm. until it's kind of kicked back on and activated again. Um, so I was I was blessed, lucky that that even you know was able to work again. But I'm still without a thyroid and there was a lot of things I could have done differently before making such a decision um, to get it removed, like detoxing. And What do you wish they would have told you? Oh, um, they don't, they don't really explain the, how, what the thyroid's job is and how it connects and what it connects to. Um, I have a pituitary tumor that, causes a lot of imbalances and it caused Cushing syndrome. I'm calling it syndrome. They want to call it disease because I've had it for mo a long time, over 10 years. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that's really what to call everything when you think about it. The doctors pull down is just syndrome. Right. Yeah. Right. Because uh, you've, you've seen me up as long as you've known me, I've been as high as like 400 plus pounds, as low as 130 pounds. That's extreme. That's yeah. really extreme. <clears throat> yeah. And um, a lot of that has to do with the uh, fight or flight hormone and adrenal fatigue. And it all was based on your eating. Yeah. So they didn't tell you, uh, they didn't tell you the thyroid's job at all. And, and to be frank, probably have, they probably have little knowledge of the thyroid, which, you know, any, um, any, any researchers and doctors that's, uh, specifying organs that I've talked with, um, I've commonly heard, well, the truth is we really don't know that much about this organ. Um, where, you know, like... They just say it's your metabolism. That's all they said. It's your metabolism. Yeah, and metabolism is just as BS as saying, oh, it's your genetics. It's like a placeholder for these things. So so they didn't tell you that. Um, uh, what else do you wish that they would have told you? Uh, other people, I'm sure I, wish they would, I, I wasn't showing any heavy symptoms 
when they discovered it and I've re I've reversed symptoms and weight gain in the past um, it would have been as, as simple when you have such a high fight or flight hormone being produced and everything's out of whack you got to use that you got to use that hormone that hormones like a steroid so it's just like uh, how people pump cattle full of steroids you know they get bigger <laughs> if then yeah. they get fatter when you're not use when they're not using it the way it's supposed to be used or if it's overproduced yeah. um, it would have been great if I would have used it properly and worked out more ate better and used it to my advantage instead of acting like it's a disease because who's to say that there's something wrong with me maybe that's just how I'm designed Wow. 20 percent so of people have this mic microwave anoma and don't even realize it and they're just overweight when really they could just be working out and eating right wow so like so basically going through what you went through and you know doctor telling you this stuff with your thyroid and oh man there's so much fight or flight going on people who are having all this fight or flight going on can use that to their advantage is that what you're saying they, they could have told me that yeah i i've never thought of it like that 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 makes a ton of sense it's a yeah it's a steroid you and the only reason why i even come up with this conclusion is because i've reversed my symptoms before on my own not knowing i had the disorder yeah Wow. <laughs> um, you know, I mean, you know me really well. You know, like sometimes I laugh out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I just laugh thinking like, I mean, I don't mean to laugh. It's not funny, but I laugh thinking like, you know, one thing that I wish um, some doctors had told me in the past uh, really is a lot of things that they also don't know. Like people are looking at these, looking at doctors and expecting them to be like the end all be all expert or they're thinking they can get a second opinion, another second opinion, and suddenly combine that to have some expert guidance when um, when it's not. Like when I got my bottom two wisdom teeth pulled down, pulled out, I was 17. And um, you know what I know now about that, I definitely wish I would have known, wow, um, your teeth are so important for buffering your blood. And especially your wisdom teeth, and they're connected to other organs, like your pineal gland, and, yeah. Dang, like I was being told that it wasn't useful. And so remove them. So I mean, did they tell you at all, like, hey, you know, a thyroid is really not that useful when it's getting crazy like that. They can remove it. Oh, no, they told me that it, uh, it's imperative that I stay on the medication the rest of my life. I mean, like, besides that part, like, you know, you don't need it when we got the medication. It's yeah, yeah. Message. yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. um, but they acted like it was a very standard procedure, like, hey, let's just uh, get it removed and you'll be fine. No. Is, that, is that true that um is that true that like hey these medication can you know you don't need this thyroid when we have this medication just take a medication for your life is that true right that's what they said uh-huh but is that true though oh um what that if uh uh i get it removed i have to take it no is it true that um you don't need the thyroid it's just as good to have the oh. medication yeah, they said it was this. I would be fine, and that's the same. And I've had worse symptoms: blacking out in a thyroid storm, coma. <laughs> I've had some more issues than I had with the so-called messed up thyroid. Wow! So yeah. it almost sounds like um, you know where they played it off as being standard, a uh, standard thing, and that it would be fine and you'd be better off. It sounds like that's not the case. Right. Or at least right. not the case when you don't know what you can do about it, right? Right. Yeah, because now it's uh, it's hard to, um, unless you're going to a specialist and on some good good insurance and you're on top of things. So especially like I just moved in, you know, back to Florida, getting myself reestablished, just to get your get yourself on medication. You have to hospital hop and doctor hop and go to general practitioners and kind of to beg for them for the medication and they're, they're uncomfortable doing it because they're not checking your blood work, even though there's not, they're not going to find any of the hormone in me because I don't have the, the glands and it's just, yeah, it's a, it's a lot. It, it, they're trying to just keep, you know, they keep you in the system that way. They, uh, uh, they keep you coming back for sure. <laughs> yeah, it sounds almost like, I mean, of course these doctors, I'm guessing that the doctor you went through that said this about your thyroid didn't do the operation, but referred you to somebody to do the operation. Correct. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, <clears throat> assuming or hope, 
hoping that their relationship is not just a business referral relationship that they communicate with one another with one another um, you know i would suspect that these experts on the thyroid that say this that they would be familiar with your story and many other people's story about the problems afterwards do you feel right. that they're familiar with that at all oh they don't even talk about you know uh what could happen um mm. that's the down part of it like uh uh, they didn't tell me about thyroid storms and that I could end up in a coma. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. And know. also, I mean, the, reason the radiation. Oh, yeah. Please continue, please. Oh, yeah. So, and also going on radiation, they don't tell you. Uh, they say, oh, yeah, it's just a, it's just the pill form of radiation. You'll be fine. Um, while they're gowned up in a separate room and you're opening a 10-pound lead container to take a pill that no one wants to touch um and having to go into isolation i was like okay well you know at least it's just the pill form right mm -hmm. um yeah. you take it and then your bones become brittle i broke eight ribs just from coughing and um you know what, yeah. what do you say um i mean for doctors that for all of these like doctors dealing with the thyroid uh, for them to know what happens and not tell you really to get that referral um so uh wouldn't it, wouldn't it be correct to say that that's a quite a dishonest thing to do oh yeah definitely they put fear in you and they tell you you're gonna die if you don't get mm -hmm. it removed and if you don't get the cancer removed yeah so when i they so said i probably had it for over five years basically it was we're not gonna tell you about all this bad stuff just do it yeah. that's like uh have you have, do you watch vegetable police or have you ever no. watched this guy, I love this guy. And uh, I especially love him because I watch his journey and all that. And um, the whole time while I'm watching his journey, I'm like, no, you fool, don't do that. <laughs> but then other times he does things that are incredibly great. And he learns through the whole process. He, you know, that's how you learn. You do, uh, he does the dumb things, right? Mm -hmm. and, um, and so there was a time where he did like this really long water fast. And, um, he didn't really i don't remember what he did to break the water fast i think it was like eggs or something but um it didn't sound like it would be a healthy thing to do considering that he had this belief that like oh if i break this badly oh my god i could i could go to the hospital but uh so he ended up going to the hospital and he you know wasn't in his hometown in canada he was in i believe uh Phuket, thailand or somewhere like malaysia yeah and so he went to the emergency room and you know imagine this they're telling him hey listen we need to operate on your appendix so you sign these papers and you're going to the emergency room and he said whoa 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 hold on a second no <laughs> i just came here for help i'm not getting operated on and the lady was like sir you will die if you do not go there that's that's what it boiled down to and he was like, I don't care. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, basically, um, lucky for him, uh, he was aware that that wasn't the answer. And he didn't care how much they threatened them with death. But m almost nobody is at that point of understanding how they can manipulate their own health to reject that. Uh, people are very afraid and they're going there for guidance. Just wanted to share that with you. Uh, yeah, f fear will kill you first. I truly believe that. You know, I'll post a video for you too that you might be interested in. I don't get it. I don't understand it. But I completely thought about you and everyone else that deals with thyroid issues um, when this happened. So I was watching this video that, you know, a lot of these videos that I watch on that deal with how emotions have a lot to do with your health. And so this lady was going to get her thyroid removed the next day. And <clears throat> this, um, you know, psychoanalyst therapist was talking with her uh, who understood, um, I mean, not a professional, but um, who understood like, hey, you know, there's something, you know, in your throat emotionally that you're avoiding that's causing this. And she really didn't want to get her thyroid removed. So what was suggested to her, the person knew that she had cheated on her husband um, and that was eating her alive. So what he's suggested but she wasn't still cheating on her husband it was like a long time ago thing i think yeah and the person she was suggested like if you want to help 
help that, your thyroid, with your situation, with this, this truth and all these things, you know, you might want to consider that. So what she did was she went home and she told her husband about the infidelity she had with him in the past and um, told him and talked through that. And, you know, maybe there were some springs, who knows what happened. So she, but she didn't do the, she didn't do the um, operation the next day. Um, and when she went to the doctors, they said like, oh, huh, I mean, okay, well, your thyroid doesn't seem nearly as bad here. Uh, we must have misdiagnosed you. So maybe they misdiagnosed her. Uh, maybe that helps. But um, I'll, I'll put that video in so you can hear that whole story. Um, you might find it interesting. You might get a lot more from it than I got. Yeah, I would like to see that because uh, I told you what happened with me when it spread into my lymph nodes. Um, they're like, well, it, you know, it's positive for sure. You know, there's seven of them that's positive, so we're going to remove all of them. And when positive uh, answer right yep and when i uh when i received prayer in a group setting over my uh thyroid and lymph nodes before um or after it got removed it was after it got removed um the i got called over to the doctors and they wanted to do another scan and just uh and they're like hey we think we left some in there because the ones that we tested are all negative. Mm. So all my lymph nodes were negative after seven of them tested positive. And that just tells me like, you know, it's, it has a lot to do with where, where you're at with, uh, with God, with prayer, where you are mentally. It's uh, how, how would something that was already biopsied, like t tissue taken out of it and, came up positive and then all of a sudden it's negative after you know after they remove it yeah you know, after cool. after prayer and after asking for forgiveness and um you know that's how that's how good god is um well there's like doc dr robert morse um i wrote this down one day when i saw a video where he said it um and this was before i realized how much emotions how much resisting emotions affected uh, human health, um, where, you know, there are people who do very unhealthy things and they get, they get different symptoms from it or, or different areas of their body get affected or this cancer's here or that cancer's there, or why isn't it in the same location with everybody? Right. I mean, whatever you eat is going down the same exact food tube. Um, and so now I realize, like, wow, that might have a lot to do with emotions. And Dr. Robert Morse had mentioned, you know, he said very straight into the camera, he was saying every single disease um, all of these illnesses, their cause is absolutely emotion. Emotions which can be influenced physically by influencing the, the organs that are the centers for these emotions. And I thought that was really interesting. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'd like to see that because like I'm a firm believer. <laughs> this is like five years ago I saw that one too. Oh, yeah. It was yeah, really but interesting firm believer in that after after what i went through because it's uh i i've seen they told me i was going to be completely um uh you know possibly in a wheelchair which i was for a little while and um disabled and i shouldn't work and i no i did i said that's not going to happen yeah probably the same things like you need to stay inside and wear a mask over your face and not go outside. And oh yeah. I'm of course joking about the scamdemic going on. Well, I was definitely told that because, <laughs> because once you, they always say, you know, if you had cancer, you should not be out and about, you should not um, expose yourself, especially even with the flu and you're going to, you know, you're going to get it worse than anyone else. And you see me walking around just fine. <laughs> Yeah. Just fine. Well, I hope a lot of people get to see this and consider that, you know, of course, that are going to be very fearful if they don't know about something or they have something to fear. But uh, yeah, I really hope a lot of people hear this, Christy. Thanks, man. Yeah, me too. There's, uh, you know, I'm still working on it. <clears throat> um, I still have to do my, my work on it because I'm still like 292 in weight. 
mm-hmm. and I'm still trying to get to closer to 160 at least. Mm-hmm. And the hardest part is um, getting through the symptoms and not letting it scare me. You know, it's like, oh, well, my, you know, my ribs hurt, my back hurts, this hurts, and it's hard to breathe. And it's, you know, there's a lot of things that, that'll fight you on it. Um, yeah. We'll do anything. A, a lot of people will do anything not to fear, not to feel that fear uh, instead of just like feeling it, and crying about it. Yeah. Which I'm finding to be a lot more helpful lately. Yeah. Crying about it and then getting through it. So. Yeah. Thank been- you. Thank you so much, Chrissy. I, I really appreciate you talking. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Thanks for talking with me. Let's talk again. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. All right. I love you. I love you too. Bye. Bye.